Hello, everyone. Paul here with Open Spaces. Today, I'm going to talk about why we sold off all of our short-term rentals and focused all our attention to the long-term rental strategy. All right, let's get started. Let me just start off by saying that I'm not trying to diss short-term rentals. I was myself a short-term rental owner. I don't argue with money. My goal is not to be right in this world. My goal is to be profitable, to build wealth, and to help you do the same. And we're in the trenches with you. We're active real estate investors. And so I'm here to share my experience with you as I navigate this world of real estate investing. I'm a seasoned investor, and I hope that my experience helps you navigate your journey into real estate investing. So if you don't know us, I'm Pollock. I'm a business owner. We specialize in the scale framework. I was an engineer for 17 years. My husband, Niti, who's also my business partner, he was also in corporate in um, finance and strategy for about the same number of years. We are both now full-time real estate investors. In about five years, we built a $10 million portfolio using our scale framework, which is what we teach and talk about now. And we hope that that helps you build your wealth and your rental portfolio. So it took us about five years to build a $10 million rental portfolio using the Burr strategy, but it is a supercharged version of the Burr strategy. We've been featured on Your Pockets, our book based on this strategy called Accelerate Your Real Estate was also recently published by Bigger Pockets. If you haven't read it, you should absolutely read it. It is on Amazon. And if you go to our website, openspaceswomen.com forward slash book, you will find a 10% off coupon code to buy it on the Bigger Pockets website as well. So first and foremost, what you need to understand about the short-term rental strategy is it's cyclical which means that there are going to be long vacancy periods if you own a short-term rental. That combined with the higher asset values means short-term rentals are going to have higher asset values compared to long-term rentals, right? Because they, they need to be in markets that are more expensive. They need to have interiors designed that are more higher and to perform well. So they're just going to have higher asset values inherently. That's what that strategy is all about, right? So they're going to have higher asset values, which means that your mortgage is going to be higher. So when that vacancy rate is higher, that high mortgage hurts even more because you're going to be vacant longer than long-term rentals. Also, the maintenance costs are much higher due to amenities, supplies, utilities. So here are some expenses that you should consider for short-term rentals that are not a part of the long-term rental investing strategy. You need high-quality furniture. You need good decor, professionally designed decor, towels, bedding, utensils, appliances, utilities like water, cable, TV, and Wi-Fi, which you cannot expect the tenant to pay for like you do in the long-term investing strategy. Uh, cleaning, sewage, garden maintenance, trash removal, plus it comes with damages because when there is so much wear and tear of people using the furniture and the appliances and the towels and the beddings and the utensils, all of that, it comes with more chances of damages and more expenses. So it's just in general, the expenses are higher. Now, when you combine the higher expenses and the higher mortgage with higher vacancy, it hurts your pocket a lot more. Now, when it comes to long-term rentals, the vacancy is inherently lower. That's just how it works because you sign a lease for one year at a time. So only while you're trying to find that tenant is your property vacant, and then it's occupied for a whole year, which is not the case in short-term rentals, right? Because you have to have somebody stay there a few days at a time. Even if you're doing medium-term rentals, it's still a couple months at a time. So every time a tenant leaves, now you have to find somebody else. And so your vacancy is higher inherently. That's just how these strategies are. So again, long-term rentals have low vacancy. Now that combined with the fact that long-term rentals Especially in our strategy, what we do is we invest in secondary markets. We invest in stable, non-volatile secondary markets, which means that the properties are going to be cheaper. So if you think about if you have a million dollars uh, in assets, if you own short-term rentals, you may have between one and three doors for that million dollars. But if you have the same amount of 
money that you own real estate in in long-term rentals now you own between five and ten doors in long-term rentals and so what happens is if one of them is vacant now think about if your million dollar property is vacant you're getting zero revenue but you have to pay that million dollar mortgage now if you have long-term rentals which are cheaper now say for that million dollars you have four rentals five rentals each property is worth 200k right if you have five rentals each property is worth 200k now if one of them is is vacant you only have to come up with that mortgage that is 200k mortgage not the million dollar mortgage it's a 200k mortgage plus you have those other four properties helping you pay that mortgage because they're still collecting rent while that one is vacant and so it really allows you to distribute your vacancy which is again lower to begin with also, long-term rentals have lower maintenance costs. The expenses that we talked about that are very specific to short-term rentals, they don't exist in the long-term rental strategy. So that allows you to have low maintenance costs. So when your property is vacant, your expenses are lower. Another element that you may not be aware of is hotels are making a comeback. And the CEO of Airbnb, Brian Chesky, very recently said that we want prices to move and be more competitive. That's, I'm quoting him really. He said, we want prices to move and be more competitive. What does that mean? That means he wants hosts to lower their prices so that they can compete with hotels because hotels are making a comeback. Now, if you look at the collective revenue of Airbnb, it has gone up. Okay, so that could be deceptive when you look at the data. It could seem like, oh, wait, Airbnb revenue is going up. That means the short term rental market is doing good. No, that is not true because if you look at the Airbnb revenue, that may have gone up, but that's because a lot more properties are now on Airbnb. If you look at what hosts are making, they're actually making lower. We know because we own short-term rentals. So the hosts are making significantly lower than they did before. So the per property rate has gone down. And if you're someone who has been looking at Airbnbs before and who looks at it now, you've noticed that in many markets, the amount that we used to pay for Airbnb, now you can get better Airbnbs for cheaper. What does that tell you? That tells you that Airbnb as a company is doing really good because their revenue is going up, but you as a property owner who wants to put your property as on the market as a short-term rental, you're not making that much more per door, you're making less per door, right? So competition and price wars are rising and we experience this ourselves. Also, the regulations and compliance laws around different cities, they are hit or miss, right? You have no idea when the city could change the regulations. You don't know what's acceptable today is going to be acceptable in future. We're finding that it's it's getting more and more difficult and cities are cracking down on Airbnb hosts more and more. So another element to take into account, and I believe this is one of the most important things, is long-term rentals are relatively passive. They're easy to manage. Whether you're self-managing, whether you're hiring a property manager, they're much easier to manage. Short-term rentals are, they just take up a lot of time. There's high turnover of guests in a short-term rental, which demands regular cleaning, maintenance, and active communication for check-ins and support. And that's why if you look at the property management rates for long-term rentals versus short-term rentals, and you know, as someone who's owned both, and I coach, I work with thousands of people who own these, I know what the rates are. The long-term rentals management rates are between 5 and 10% of the rent, of the revenue. That's what the property management company is going to take to manage your rental. For short-term rentals, it goes tremendously up. It is 20%, and I haven't, I have rarely seen 20%. It's 20 to 30%. I have seen it go even as high as 40% to manage your short-term rental. So basically, the revenue that you're making, you're paying between 20 and 40% to the property management company because it is just that much more work and it is that time consuming. So whether you're giving it to a property management company, in that case, you're paying with money, or if you're self-managing, in that case, you're paying with your time because 
time is one of your biggest asset. That's your one of your key performance indicators. So again, comparing the long term and the short term, long term, five to 10 percent, short term, 20 to 30 percent. Again, I've seen it as go as high up as 40 percent. That's a huge difference. And that's a part of your revenue. They're not taking a piece of your profit. They're taking a chunk of your revenue. So it's not even after all the expenses. It is the rent that you're getting, the Airbnb rates that you're getting. That's what it's coming out of. And that's a huge, huge hit on your profitability. Also, we have some friends who are pretty big names in the Airbnb industry, and one of them just sold off majority of their portfolio because it was too much upkeep. It was costing too much to hold on to these short-term rentals, and they're reinvesting that money into long-term rentals. We've also been friends with many investors who do the short-term rental arbitrage strategy, which means that you don't own any rentals. You rent out a property, and then you use it for short-term rentals. And what I hear again and again from these investors is right now their profit is what they would pay a property manager. Meaning if they self-manage, then they make some money, but they're spending a lot of their time managing those properties. And if they give it out to a property manager to manage, then they don't make any money on their short-term rentals. And so when you think about it that way, you understand why the short-term rental industry is taking a hit right now. Recently we heard, was it Bloomberg that called it the Airbnb bust? And when you look at the numbers and when you look at how volatile this industry is, um, we decided to sell off all of our short-term rentals and move, reinvest all that money into the long-term rentals. Now, one thing I will say, who is the right person who short-term rentals are right for still? If you have a ton of time, if you have a ton of time, you don't have kids like me, you know, I have little kids. I want to do fun things with them. I want to spend time with them. I want energy to devote to them. I want to enjoy being a mom. If you have little kids, time matters to you way more. If you are starting this journey part-time, meaning you have a full-time job and you're getting into real estate because either you want to make work optional, you want to create generational wealth, maybe you want to quit your job at some point, you're already, you already have a full-time job. You need a strategy that doesn't require a lot of your time. Then this isn't right for you. If you have little kids like me, this isn't right for you. But if you have a ton of time and you don't mind all the day-to-day -day activities that come in with the short-term rentals, then it might be right for you. So for all those reasons, we've sold off all of our short-term rentals and we are focusing on the long-term rental strategy. So we're active investors. We're in the trenches with you. We are trying different things so we can come back and report and tell you how it went, what went well, what didn't go well, what is the right thing to do right now in the current market. And I will be sharing that information with you as time goes by. I hope that was helpful. All right, you guys, see you next time. Bye now. When you're ready to get serious, you can join us at theinvestoraccelerator.com. It's like getting a thousand episodes worth of information in five days, and it's everything you need to build your actionable plan to financial freedom and making work optional.